Hallelujah. Turn with me to Luke, the fourth chapter, verse 18. Luke, the fourth chapter, and verse number 18. When you have it, say amen. And it reads as follows. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. In, the, in, the, uh, in another translation, the, in the NIV it says, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he hath anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for prisoners and the recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. In verse 20 it says, And then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, sat down, and the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he begins by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. One of a few more scriptures I want to, to bring into this message. 2 Corinthians, the third chapter in the 17th verse. It reads as follows. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. In the Amplified Translation, that same verse, 2 Chronicles 3 and 17 says, Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, emancipation from bondage and freedom. And then St. John, the 8th chapter in the 36th verse says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. This message actually was birthed out of, out of a prophetic word that I received, a prophetic word that I received a few days ago. And the reason that, that this prophetic word struck me, the, the reason that this prophetic word struck me so was that it was not from a prophet. I don't know this man to be a prophet. It was not from a preacher. I don't know this man to be a preacher. It was not from, uh, praise God, uh, someone that I would have expected this word to come from. But, but I'll, I'm going to read the word that I received. And then as the Lord began to deal with me concerning this message, I began to understand. I began to understand why that message was so significant. Because this message is birthed out of this particular prophetic word. This is not a man. I don't know this man personally. I've never met this person. I have talked to them many times on the phone. They're not, they don't even live in this nation. But this is the prophetic word that was sent to me. And it said a few days ago, and it says, Happy New Month and the beginning of the second half of the year, my very hardworking brother. May God fill your mouth with laughter this month. All your unfulfilled desires of the first half of the year shall be fulfilled this time around in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Woo! Now, I don't know about you, but it's something to get a prophetic word from a prophet. You expect that. This is so unexpected. I've never received a prophetic word from th this particular individual. I don't know. I, 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 he did mention that he went to a, that he does go to church, but you know what that might mean. But this was the prophetic word. I'm gonna read it one more time because I believe that this prophetic word is was not for me only. I believe 
that this prophetic word was not only for me, but it was for you because it is connected to the message that the Lord is going to minister to us this morning. Happy New Month and the beginning of the second half of the year, my very hardworking brother, my very hardworking sister. May God fill your mouth with laughter this month. <laughs> Woo, thank you, Jesus. All your unfulfilled desires of the first half of the year shall be fulfilled this time around in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen just means so be it. Mm. Today is the third day of the seventh month, and tomorrow we will be celebrating July 4th, which is called Independence Day. Mm. It's a celebration of the United States of America's independence from Great Britain's rule. And this event was initiated by a document called the Declaration of Independence. It's, very inter it's a very interesting. This is, we, we're getting ready to celebrate our nation's birth. We're getting ready to celebrate uh, the, the, uh, the, the independence of our nation. But I believe that God is releasing a prophetic message this morning that will declare and will release a new level of freedom and independence in your life. Because the, 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 the scripture that the Lord gave me was the scripture in Luke 4 where it says, Jesus says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. To, to, he has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then the 21st verse says, and then he says this. He says, and he begins saying to them, today, look at somebody say, today, yes. is this scripture fulfilled in your hearing? So we're celebrating the independence of the nation. And it's very, very interesting that the, that the birth of our nation, the breaking away from Britain, took place in the first week of the seventh month of 1776. So it's interesting that it was in the seventh month. We're in the seventh month now, right? It was on the fourth day, 1776. And so the Lord began to deal with me about the number seven. See, the number seven is significant it's a significant number in the word of God. Seven is a number of perfection and completeness. When God wants to finish something, it's usually finished in the series of seven. In Genesis 2, verse 1 through 3, it says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all of his works, which he had created and made. Now, there are several other scriptures that speak of seven and its completion. But I want you to see, but in the book of beginnings, it starts out with God creating the heaven and the earth, and it, he created the heaven and earth. He finished in seven days. And then he blessed the seventh day. And so, praise God, I believe, praise God, that this is significant for us. The seventh, seven is so very, very important number. Now, also, there's, it is significant, the seventh month, is also a very significant month in the word of God. The seventh month was the month in which three of the feasts of Israel took place. 
the, 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 the first day of the seventh month in Israel was the Feast of Trumpets. The tenth day of the seventh month was the Day of Atonement. And the fifteenth day of the seventh month was the Feast of Tabernacles. Now we know the first month was Passover, but it wasn't until the seventh month that three, three feasts were fulfilled. So the seventh month is significant. So as we speak today, I want you to, 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 to put on your prophetic uh, understanding and realize, praise God, that this seventh month, is significant in our life and in the life of this ministry, this church, your family. Praise God. God is doing something in this seventh month that he has not done before. I like the prophetic word from prophetess uh, Jordan when she prophesied a new dispensation has been released over your life. So the, so the, the, the three feasts that were in the seventh month was the first day of the seventh month was the Feast of Trumpets. The tenth day of the seventh month was the Day of Atonement. The fifteenth day of the seventh month was the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Trumpets symbolizes the prophetic voice of God, the call of God's people together for the preparation for the atonement. In Isaiah 58 and 1, it says, cry loud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion. Show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. So in the seventh month was the, 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 the first day was the feast of trumpets. The prophetic voice and the prophetic word of God always comes to prepare us for what God is about to do. It prepares us for what, for what God is about to bring on the scene. And so trumpets, trumpets uh, signify the prophetic voice of God through his prophets, through his servants, praise God, that declare, praise God, what God is about to do. And I'm going to tell you this seventh month for you is going to be a month, praise God, that begins a new season in your life. The first half of this year, you may have caught hell, but the second half of this year, you're going to receive the favor of God. If you believe that, say amen. amen. So the Feast of Trumpets was the prophetic word, and we have received in living bread so many prophetic words concerning what God will do in this house. You individually have received prophetic words uh, in your life that God has said, praise God, that you have not seen fulfilled. But God's prophetic word was just opening up the way, was just preparing you, praise God, for God's blessing on your life. The, 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 the next feast was the was the tenth day of the seventh month, and it was the day of atonement. Now, the day of atonement is the most solemn of all days in Israel. It was the day of atonement, and what uh, it was a day of the sacrifice of for the sins of the people. And it was three aspects to it. Aaron was was offering a sacrifice for him and his family. He was offering a sacrifice for all of the people, and then he was offering a sacrifice for the house of God, for the sanctuary. Now that's significant. I don't have time to go into it because that's a whole nother message. But what I want you to understand is, is that the day of atonement, praise God, at that word atonement can also, we, uh, is at one minute. It was the coming back together of the people of God to oneness with God. It was bringing them back to the a place, praise God, where they would be in perfect communion and in sync with what God was doing, what God was saying, how God was moving, and so praise God. And in order to do that, there had to be a sacrifice, and so the blood was sacrificed. It was sacrificed for Aaron and his family first. Look at somebody say the family first. 
See, God is, a, uh, is so wise. He knows, praise God, that we can talk about what God is going to do in living bread, but God is going to do something in your family. He's going to do something in your home. He's going to do something in your children. He's going to do something on your job. He's going to do something in your business. Isn't it great you glad that God is a personal God, that he's not just redeeming us collectively, but he cares about us individually? Come on, ought to say amen. Man. So we, so the day of atonement was, praise God, the day that the nation, he did, uh, th that coming back together, he brought the, the Aaron and his family into one minute with God. Then he brought the nation into one minute with God. Then he brought the sanctuary. See, that's the church, the church. God is going to do something in your family. He's going to do something in the church, and he's also going to do something in the nation. This seventh month is a birthing month. It's a month, praise God, that God is shifting into a new season. Look at somebody say, it's a new season. It's a new season. I know what happened in the first half of the year, praise God. But you know, one thing that I've learned, praise God, and you know, I, I, I enjoy sports, uh, you know, and, and, and in, in sports, you know, in football, I really enjoy football. And one of the things is that the football is played in two halves. How many know that? I know the men know that. It's played in two halves. And you can have a great first half and flop in the second half and lose the game. I don't care what your first half was. Uh, look at your closest neighbor and say, I'm a second half man. I'm a second half woman. In other words, you ain't seen my best yet. You just saw me in the first half. I was just figuring out what the devil was doing. I was just figuring out where God was going. But in the second half, ah, glory to God, I'm about to break out in the second half. Hey, Kobashata. So that prophetic word that said your, 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 your second half of the year, I said, oh, glory to God. I, I was, I, I, when I thought about football, I think about in the championship, the AFC championship game between, uh, between uh, uh, Kansas City and the Cincinnati Bengals. Kansas City was leading by about 21 points in the first half. Look at your neighbor and say, but the second half. Oh, the devil might have been leading in the first half. <laughs> he might have got some licks in in the first half. But the seventh month is the second half. Hallelujah. Somebody's about to make a comeback. Uh, see, uh, in the second half, Cincinnati came back. I don't know about you, devil. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. You may have done some stuff from January to June, but I just crossed over into the seven. <laughs> I just called, crossed over into the perfection of God. In the, uh, God was trying to complete some things in me in the first half. But the second half is the release of God's favor. Oh, somebody ought to say amen in my life. The last of those feasts in that month is the 15th day of the seventh month was the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles was a feast that commemorated Israel's exodus out of the wilderness and God's deliverance of Egypt from bondage. Remember that, that, that uh, one of the things that they would do in tabernacles is they would live in tents because they were commemorating how they came through the wilderness. See, God can't only break you out of Egypt, but he can take you through the dangerous places on the way to your promised land. And so God said, I don't want you to forget what I, how I brought you out. I don't want you to forget where you came from. How many know, praise God, that God brought you from a mighty long way? How many know God brought you out of darkness into this marvelous light? How many know, praise God, that I will never will forget what God has done in my life? I'll never forget how he changed my life. 
Hey, and so the this the seventh month signified the prophetic word, signified coming in oneness with God, signified, praise God, remembrance of the deliverance of God of his people out of Egypt. And God has brought us out, set us free. Thank you, Jesus. And then praise God. There is several other significant, and I'll just mention some incidents, and you can read these scriptures when you have an opportunity. But there's, there's other events that occurred on this, in the seventh month. Do you know in the seventh month that Noah's ark rested on Mount Ararat on the seventh day of the seventh month? <laughs> in other words, praise God, the ark was a type of Jesus. And praise God. And the ark protected them in the water. But eventually, praise God, God caused the ark to land on the top of the Mount Ararat. In other words, praise God, God, Jesus is about to make his landing in your life. Jesus is about to land in your situation. Jesus is about, praise God, to touch down in the midst of your trouble, in the midst of your trial. And so, praise God, seven has a very significant, and so I believe prophetically that God is telling us that the things that, that have been prophesied concerning what God would do, this seventh month, we will begin to see the fulfillment of the words of God that have been spoken over our life, and it starts now, this day, this seventh month, praise God, this third day, uh, praise God, in the seventh month, praise God, of this year in Jesus' name. Solomon finished the building of the house of the Lord on the 23rd day of the seventh month. And you got to read, you know, when we read 2 Chronicles 7, we usually read 2 Chronicles 7 14. If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray. But if you study that, you will find out, praise God, that, that Solomon finished the house of God on the 23rd day of the seventh month, and then the Lord appeared unto him. Mm. So I believe prophetically what the Lord was trying to say to me and say to you is God's about to finish this house. God is about, oh God, see that, ain't, that, ain't, that may not make you happy, but I know Sister Hogan who is probably laying in the bed and watching this and probably saying because she's not feeling well, but honey, the Lord said, praise God, that he going to finish this house. Uh, he going to finish what he said. He started it, he going to finish it. He, he started it, he's going to complete it, and he's going to do the same thing in your life. He's about to finish this house. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Ha, glory to God. Let's go back and let's look at this because I believe that, and, the, and the, let me, for the, for, for the tape or for the, the CD or for the whatever, the, the, I'm going to give you a, a title of this message. It's called Independence Day. Somebody say Independence Day. Now let's go back to Luke 4. It says the spirit of Jesus walks into the temple, walks into the synagogue. The Bible says as his custom was. He goes into the synagogue and he gets the book of the Old Testament. He turns to Isaiah 61 and he begins to give this message. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind and release to the oppressed. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. 20 verse, verse says, and he begins by saying he and he began by saying to them today look at somebody say today, today. is this scripture fulfilled in your hearing today is your day of trumpets today is your day of atonement today is your day hallelujah of tabernacles 
In other words, praise God, God is bringing us into our own independence. And even though our nation is celebrating their independence, we ought to be celebrating how God brought us out of darkness into this marvelous light. He translated us out of the kingdom of darkness. He translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. He broke the chains off of our life and gave us his liberty. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It said he was anointed. Now, I want you to understand that Jesus says that he is anointed. Now, we need to understand, praise God, that, that Jesus is announcing the anointing. Because if any of these things will come to pass... Sight to the blind, setting the captives free. It will be done by the anointing. How many know the Bible says the anointing destroys the yoke? Your freedom came because the anointed one, Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one, the son of God, the son of righteousness, because he came and he came into your life. And Jesus did not just come into your life to be, praise God, a border. <laughs> he came, praise God, to bring his favor, to bring his mercy, to bring his grace, to bring his peace, to bring his love, and to free you from everything that had you bound. The anointing destroys the yoke. So here's what the anointing does. He said he's preaching, he's preaching good news to the poor. Mm. You know what that tells me? If that tells me, praise God, that if he's preaching good news to the poor, he's saying to them that you don't have to be poor no more. <laughs> Look at somebody say, I ain't going to be poor no more. In other words, good news to the poor is that you don't have to live your life in poverty. You don't have to live your life in lack. You don't have to live your life under. I can put you over. And so he preached. He said, I got some good news for you. I got some good news for you. You just hit the heavenly lottery. <laughs> I just opened up the windows of heaven and poured you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. I can take the little that you give and turn it into much, says the Spirit of God. I can take two fishes and five loaves of bread and feed 5,000 people and then pick up 12 baskets of leftovers because I am the God that is more than enough. I am the God called El Shaddai, the God, hallelujah, that has more and that's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask, think, or imagine. So he proclaims, praise God, he preached to the poor. In other words, he proclaims to them that you don't have to be poor anymore. He sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners. It's to proclaim freedom to, the, to those that are in bondage. Whatever you are bound by or whatever has you tied down, the anointing that Jesus has that he's proclaiming, that he's declaring over you can break the yoke. Oh, don't tell me you can't stop. Don't tell me you got the can't help it because God can come into your life and change your life, break those chains off of your life and praise God and give you liberty and freedom in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Says he preached, he proclaimed. See, uh, the 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 the, um, the 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 document that was released in 1776 at the Continental Congress there was called the Declaration of Independence. See if you really are going to be delivered, set free, 
it's going to have to be declared. Uh, uh, you got to say, I declare that I'm free. I declare that I'm healed. I declare that I'm blessed. I declare that I am the head and not the tail. I declare that I am above only and not beneath. I declare that I am the lender and not the borrower. I declare that God, hallelujah, has brought me out of darkness into this marvelous life. I declare. How many want to declare something this morning? This is Independence Day. You need to be declaring your independence. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Open your mouth and tell the devil, you can't hold me bound in this situation any longer. I declare that I am free. I declare that I am healed. I declare that I am blessed. I declare my independence. I declare, I declare. I'm declaring, praise God, that the second half of this year, <laughs> you know, one, one thing in the, in, in the, I believe it's the eighth chapter of the book of Haggai, it talks about the fact that in the seventh month that Haggai, that they prophesied concerning the house of God. And this is what Haggai said in that seventh month. See, seven is significant. He, God knows, praise God, how to finish some stuff. Look at somebody and say, this is my seventh heaven. <laughs> you, have you ever heard somebody say the seventh heaven? Now, we know that there's three heavens, you know, the third heaven. But seven heaven, you know when they say the seventh heaven, you know why they say seven heaven? Because they're saying this is my best time. I'm living in seven heaven. And Haggai prophesies, and this is a prophetic word. He said to, to uh, Zerubbabel, and Shaquille, and, and uh, Shatil, he, he, he was prophesying to them. And he said, how many of you have seen the glory of the latter house? I mean, of the, of the former house. <laughs> Look at somebody say the seventh month. The seventh month, the house, the new house is coming. The seventh month. He said, how many of you have seen the glory? He, he prophesied. He said, but the glory of the latter house. In other words, he was saying, y'all ain't seen nothing yet. I prophesy to you, living bread, you ain't seen nothing yet. You think you didn't see the blessings of God. You think you didn't see the outpouring of God. But God in this seventh month is about to do a new thing. He's about to start a new dispensation in your life. He's about to start a new dispensation in your family. He's about to start a new dispensation, praise God. He's about to start a new dispensation in living bread church. He's about to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all all we can ask or think, praise God. If you believe that, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Ah, Shobata. Come on, somebody say the seventh month. Toba, lebego shakabatashia. Satan has tried to bind you, but this month is your month of release. Can I read another scripture if I may? Hallelujah. 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 Deuteronomy 15, verse 1. Something about seven. It's something about seven. And it looked like the Lord said, prophetically, I want you to tell them prophetically. They, 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 they got to see this prophetically. You can't see this through the lens of what happened to you for the first six months. If you're looking back, praise God, you're not going to get this. But if you dust off those prophetic words that have been spoken over your life and bring them out in the seventh month, the same word that didn't come to pass in the first month and the second month and the third month and the fourth month and the fifth month and the sixth month, but oh, the seventh month is the month that God will release his favor. Woo. 
Glory to God. Woo, glory, glory, glory. I tell you, this is it. I'm preaching to myself. I'm preaching myself happy. Deuteronomy 15 and 1, I want you to see this because 7, 7, and, and, and I'm going to give you, I want you to do a prophetic act before we get through this, but when we get through with this message, because this is important because God is speaking to us prophetically about the shift that's happening in this seventh month. Look at Deuteronomy 15 verse 1. Uh, it says, at the end of every seven years, thou shall make a release. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Seven is the, is the month of release. Everything that's been held up is being released. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Now listen, he says that at the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release, and this is the manner of release. Every creditor that lendeth aught unto his neighbor shall release it. Mm. And he shall exact, he shall not exact it to his neighbor or his brother because the Lord has called the Lord's release. See, there was a, a ordinance in Israel. You could not keep somebody bound past seven years. In other words, praise God, they may have been in debt to you. They, they, you may have been a credit. You may have lent them money. But in the seventh year, you had to let them go. In the seventh year, you had to cancel their debt. In the seventh year, you had to call it all even. Now, what a, what a message that is to some of us. Because we're in debt up to here. But the seventh month, the seventh year, all debts have been canceled. I believe, and I prophesied this, I believe it for those that believe it, that by the end of this year, many of you will be completely out of debt you will not owe a, owe a student loan. You will not owe any money to anybody. The only thing you will owe is, praise God, is God for his goodness to cancel your debt. Look at somebody and say, my debts are being canceled. It is the year of God's release. Come on, somebody put your hands together and give God praise. He's releasing it. 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 Your blessing's been held up, but God is releasing it. I know uh, your husband, your wife has been held up, but God is releasing it. Uh, your money has been held up, but God is releasing it. Your healing has been held up, but God is releasing it. This is God's release. Come on, say, this is God's release. Woo, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Devil, I declare you got to release it. You got to let it go. I declare my independence from every creditor, from every loan, <laughs> from every obligation. It is the Lord's release. See, God told Israel, he said, you can't have people under bondage all day life. Can't have your brother under bondage all their life. He said, but when the seventh year, and even if you study this, it even says that if you were going to make a loan on the, in the sixth year, in the last part of the sixth year, go ahead and make the loan. Don't you forbid 
to give to your brother during that time because you know that the seventh year is going to be the year of release. What he said, what God said, he said, because if you do it, I will not bless you. And he said that if you will honor this, you keep, you read that when you get a chance. If you will honor this, there will come a time when there will be no poor folks among you. Woo! Look at somebody say, no more poor. I'm not going to be poor no more. God has released me from every obligation. I don't know why this is keep coming to me, but some student loans is getting ready to be paid off and canceled. I'm prophesying now. They're going to send you a letter and say, it's over. It's done. You don't hold it no more. Yes. Hey, glory. Glory. Somebody say glory. Somebody say glory. Somebody say glory. Hallelujah. Ain't nothing like being free. Free from debt. Free from sickness. Free from disease. Free from poverty. Yeah. 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 Ha <laughs> ha. God is releasing angels of wealth. Angels are going out and getting the wealth and bringing the wealth in. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about you, but this, this, that prophetic word from somebody that I didn't even know, don't claim to be a prophet. He don't get on the phone talking about Jesus. He's a business. He's a businessman. And praise God. But he sent me that, and it just blew me away. And I thought it was just for me. But as I'm in my praying about, Lord, these are your people. I got to minister to them. What should I minister? And the Lord began to just put it together. And say seven. Seventh, the seventh month. The seventh month. There is a shift going on in the spirit for those that can receive it. Those that will believe his prophet. I'm, I'm prophetically preaching and speaking. The Bible says, believe his prophet, so shall ye prosper. He is shifting something. Something is happening, not just in the spirit, but in the natural realm. Folk is getting in line. Folk is calling back and praise God and, and praise God and, and, and giving you the things that they said they would not give you. Now it's going to change. They're going to give it to you because the ship of the seventh month is here. Look at somebody say, it's my independence day. This is my declaration of independence. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Glory, 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 glory. Come on, let's just make a confession. Come on, stand on your feet. We're going to make this confession. How many ready to, 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 to declare their independence? Ready to declare my independence? Come on, say this with me. I proclaim independence from poverty and debt. I proclaim freedom from bondage. Excuse me, from the bondage of sin, sickness, all addictions, and every demonic stronghold. I recover everything that the enemy has stolen from me, stolen from my family my church and I recover everything that the canker worm, the palmer worm, and the caterpillar is eating. I pursue, I overtake, and I recover all that the enemy has stolen. I, de I, I declare all blindness have been removed from my eyes and I have perfect sight and I receive insight and revelation. I proclaim my freedom from all oppression and I break free from all ungodly restraints 
all ungodly barriers, all ungodly obstacles, and I demolish every stronghold. I proclaim that this is the year of the Lord's favor in my life. This is my jubilee year. This is my seventh year. This is the seventh month. And I live in freedom. This is my year. This is the month. This is the very day of my release and freedom in Jesus' name. Today is this word fulfilled in my life. Today is my day of independence. Put your hands together and give God praise. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. There's a release. There's a release. There's a release. There's a release. This is the year of God's release. This is the month of turnaround. God is turning everything around in your favor. This is the day of fulfillment. This is the day of receiving. This is the day of your breakthrough. There's angels being released right now to bring this word to pass. The Bible says that the angels hearken unto the voice of his word. I have preached the word of the Lord. I have preached the prophetic word of God. Now God is sending angels to cancel debt, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to set the captives free, to bring you into your wealthy place, to break every bondage over your life, to give you revelation and understanding. Thank you, Jesus. Put your hands together and give God praise. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Halalabosha. Ah. Shereneyosha. Oh, yeah. There's nothing like being free. When you're dead free, <laughs> there's nothing like being free. Come on. There's nothing like being free. This is your independence day. And I don't care what's binding you, I don't care what's got you shackled. I don't care what's got your feet tied. I don't care how much debt you're in. This is Independence Day. <laughs> ah, Shata. Yes, I feel that in the anointing. I feel that anointing. Debo reba sebe toko reba ha. Jesus said in that 21st verse of Luke 4, he said this, today, today, see, today is the day of salvation. Don't wait till they send you the letter of cancellation. Rejoice now because it's happening. It was released from heaven today. Today is this fulfilled. Look at somebody and say, today is the day of my fulfillment. Today is the day of my freedom. Today is the day of my healing. 
today. Today. Ah, Shebo, Shalarabosa. Come on, lift your hands one more time. The Lord's release. I hear it. The Lord's release. <laughs> See, I'm not going to release you from that lean. Yes, they are. Release. You released. You released. You released. You released. You released. You released. God told me to declare it over you. You released. You released. You released. You released. You released. You released. I declare you are released. 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 It's the declaration of your independence. You are released. Now say it to yourself. Say, I am released. I am released. Today is my independence day. My declaration of independence starts today in Jesus' name. Now put your hands together and give God a Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, ba 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 sha ta. E da ba ba sha ha. Oh, 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 be it free. There's nothing like being free. That's all right. There's nothing like. Some of you, you may have never been out of debt all your life. You may have lived the debt life. <laughs> Hallelujah. I remember some years ago, the Lord blessed Sister Hogan and myself with a large sum of money, and we paid off all of our bills. <laughs> Ain't nothing like being free. Just think when you get your check go in your bank account you don't owe nobody <laughs> pay your utilities and use the rest to tithe to give and to bless your family I don't know that, 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 that I just hear that God is saying I'm canceling debts and student debt is really Hallelujah. what God is saying he got to get rid of that debt because even though you got your education and you got a good job, that debt is eating up all your extra resources. Sometimes you want to give even in the house of the Lord and, you, and, and you're stifled by debt. But this is your release, your release, your release, your release, your release, your release, your release. Your release. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Just take it down a little bit more to sing, but just, I want you to, every head bowed, every eye closed, those of you that are viewing us on social media, those of you that are in the sanctuary, you will never be free. You will always be bound by something until you allow Jesus to come into your life. The Word of God says, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. You're really free. And Jesus said, I come, I'm anointed to, to break you out of bondage, to give you prosperity, to give you a good life. Poor man, you don't have to be poor anymore. I break poverty spirits off of your life. But the first thing, is you need to receive him as your Lord and as your Savior. If you're not born again, with the, our heads are bowed, our eyes closed, bow your head where you are there on social media and just say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God, that you died for my sins. 
I believe that you rose from the dead and you're alive. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. Break every bondage over my life. Break the shackles. Set me free from these things that have me bound. And Lord, I surrender to you. In Jesus' name. You prayed that prayer. I'm going to pray for you, Father, in Jesus' name. You heard the words of prayer. You saw the hearts of those that prayed this prayer. Lord, let the Holy Ghost, the love of God, be shed abroad in their hearts by the Holy Ghost. Let Jesus become real in their lives. Let them start their journey with you today in Jesus' name. We give you all glory. We give you all praise.